Hey friends, welcome back. My name's Maggie and the only thing I love more than makeup is a color pop roast. If you're new here, first of all, welcome. What I do on this here channel is at the end of every month, I go through every single release that ColourPop has done during the month. We tally it all up. If it is a good collection, I will give it snaps, but more often than not, it is terrible and we must roast it. I do wear the ColourPop hoodie usually when I do these videos. It is in no way shape or form affiliated with ColourPop, it is just the hoodie that I wear when I do these videos. Yeah, I think that's I think that's everything in the usual script. This video, however, is special because it's the end of year roundup. I did this a year previously during Vlogmas, which was insane of me to do, so glad I waited a little bit. I am filming this on December 30th and wouldn't it be on brand for ColourPop to release something at like midnight on the 31st? just to ruin my day. I don't know, but we're going to go through every single release in December, and then we are going to tally up all of the releases that ColourPop did in 2020 and compare them to last year. The answer may surprise you. Some of you may already know this, I don't purchase from ColourPop anymore, but that doesn't mean that I can't roast them, and I plan to. So if you like these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe. I put out new videos every single week, and the ColourPop playlist will be linked up above. Have fun. So the first thing we're gonna do is go through December releases. As of this filming, there were only three. I was really surprised by that until I remembered that November had nine releases and then I was like, you know what, maybe they gave their employees a holiday, in which case good for them. A surprisingly low amount of like holiday themed releases too, but let's get into the first one. December 6th we had the Aurora Struck collection that was announced. We had the Aurora Struck Mega Palette, so Dewy Face and Eye Gloss, three new Lux Lip Oils, a Light Stick, and a Soul Body Mini Shimmering Dry Oil. What are your guys' thoughts on this? To me, this is like ColourPop almost getting it. They're almost back to where they were. I think this is a beautiful winter collection. I'm especially digging the lip glosses and highlighter sticks. Those are beautiful. The palette... I do wish it was smaller. I don't think this needed to be a mega pan. I think if it were the size of like a the Lust for Dusk palette, we could have cut out a few redundant shades, but I'm surprised by how many deeper, richer tones are in this. I was encouraged by this. Honestly, I would give this collection a solid B. I'm really impressed. It feels creative. It's almost there for me. It feels like we're inching towards old color pop where they were actually colorful. It's nice. I was way too close to the camera for that. You guys didn't need to see my face that badly. <laughs> a week later, December 13th, we had Coquette Dreams, and this reminded me of their December collection. I believe it was last year where they had a similar palette and a khaki one. I'll throw it up on the screen if I can find it. Do you guys think they just recycled this? Because I do. Anyways, there's the Pretty Please 12 pan palette, four color sticks, three cheek dews, and three Fresh Kiss lip crumbs. I mean, it's not a bad palette. I think there's a fairly good mix of light and deep tones. It's just something that we've seen so many times, you know? It's nothing unique, it's nothing different, it's nothing special. So I forgot about it, I assume you all did as well. Most recently, December 26, they announced a collection, kind of. So this was an Ulta exclusive collection, and Ulta has a standard nine pan palette collection from ColourPop. I believe it's a lineup of, I wanna say five, and the post says, did you know all our nine pan palettes at Ulta have matching Super Shock shadows? That's amazing because the Super Shock shadows were what put ColourPop on the map, and sometimes I think ColourPop forgets that those are likely their most beloved products. Anyway, so they were, it was more like a reminder of, hey, we're still at Ulta, but also they added two new nine pans and thus two new Super Shocks to their collection at Ulta. Um, so there's the Sage the Day nine pan palette, Petals and Point nine pan palette, and then two new Super Shock duos. And I was pleasantly surprised again. I'm like, color and color pop? I hardly know it. Sage the Day is really it's beautiful. Reminds me a bit of the Child palette, but um, with a bit more neutral thrown in. I'm loving the shimmers in this. I would love to swatch this in person, see how it compares. Um, I like that there are, again, the deep rich mattes. These duochromes look beautiful, and I think the Super Shocks coordinate nicely. Puddles in Point is not as great, admittedly, 
with that kind of color story, you're setting yourself up for a little failure, but we're seeing some deeper mats. It's promising. I was surprised though, this, to me at least, seems like a spring collection, doesn't it? But here it is in December. What'd you all think of this? Leave a comment, let me know. Overall, I would say not a terrible month release-wise. It felt like for the most part, we we're seeing glimpses of old ColourPop, what they could be, and that made me happy. And then I tallied up all the releases for 2022 and I was unhappy. But before we go into those, I would just like to have a little in memoriam section to all the ColourPop releases for 2022 that we lost to time. That is my favorite part of the video to edit. It just makes me laugh. I don't know if you like it, but I do. All right, let's tally it all up. In January, eight releases. February, we had six. March, we also had six. April, six again. And May, you're not gonna believe it, six releases. June, three. July, six again. August, we had five releases. September, only two. October, we had five. November, nine releases and December 3. So um, if you all were doing the math, please tell me you were doing the math. You weren't? I have to do it myself? Okay, give me a moment. If my calculations are correct, that means that for 2022, ColourPop had 65 releases during the year. That's more than one a week. But you may be asking Maggie, you poor suffering soul. How does this compare to 2021? That's a great question, glad you ask. They fell short actually, because in 2021, if you'll recall, ColourPop released 66 releases. Think that's bothering them at all? I really thought they were gonna accelerate, so I'm kinda surprised to see a little dip. My prediction for January, they're gonna have at least one New Year's Eve collection, they usually do. Um, probably some IP collabs. It seemed like for 2022, it was what IP collab is ColourPop gonna do this month? We all forgot about them. I dare you to name every single IP collab ColourPop did in 2022. I know you can't. You know what would really shock me, truly? 2023, if they just did like a collection a month. Wouldn't that be nice? I know they're not going to, but a gal can dream. But I know what ColourPop is about. You all do too. What beloved childhood IP do you all think they're gonna go after in 2023? My prediction is SpongeBob. It's gonna be terrible. Um, but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Also, while we're here, a few general housekeeping items. First of all, thank you to everyone who watched Vlogmas. I actually did all 31 days. Just all Vlogmas all the time. A video every single day. Uh, that was difficult. <laughs> I don't know that I'll do it next year. That was a lot. Um, if you want to watch the playlist, I'll leave it linked up above. But thank you to all who watched it and commented. I really appreciated it. I had a lot of fun doing it, even though it got really hectic really fast. Also, because... I did 31 videos in a month. I am going to kind of slow down my filming schedule in the new year. I know you guys probably don't even know that I have a filming schedule. That's fine. I typically do three videos a week. I think I'm going to cut that down to one to two. I'm just putting that out there. I'm sure you guys don't care, but I unfortunately overthink things. So I'm just going to tell you right now, probably going to slow down a little bit. I have some filming ideas that are um, in my head that I'd like to work on a little bit, but yeah, for the most part, uh, slowing down a bit, just that sort of thing. Oh, and I want to know, do any of you have uh, makeup-related New Year's resolutions or just general goals? I'd be curious to hear your thoughts, so uh, leave a comment, let me know. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. 
and I will see you in my next video. Bye!